MLC. I wanted to share with you a quick video from inside my master's online course. I thought MLC would help. This is not about certification, which does come up with the MLC part one and part two, but this is just an MLC general video. So this is my master's online uh, course. It's available um, from my own website. It works on all devices. It has over 800 quiz questions, 49 hours of footage or video, and over, I think it's like 550 pages. That's like a small Coswop. Let's have a look at section 55 of 66 MLC. Inside you've got play video, take quiz, view documents. Now I would always suggest printing the notes off so that you can make little notes as you go through. So inside the view documents, I have my flashcards, I have my notes, so master's notes, you can click on those and you can either download them or you can print them. Um, you, most people I guess would print. I will put a link below in the description with the uh, link so you can follow it on. Um, inside all of my sections, I have the notes, the flashcards or suggested flashcards. And then I've also given you the, the reference material. So MGN 479, MLC repatriation. View document. I don't want you wasting time looking for all of the M notices, all of the conventions, everything I'm talking about in these videos. So they're all there. Every bit of reference material you would need is there. And when I highlight them in the videos, they will appear to be highlighted in my reference material. Just one of those nice things to save you time. As your exam gets closer, time becomes important. Uh, so let's have a quick look at the video. I'll show you a few features before I press play. It's a full um, video. So it remembers where you're up to. So if you get bored halfway through, you can always start again, which is nice. MLC. So before I press play, you have a choice of speed. So you can make me talk faster or you can make me talk slower. You also have, and I like this, this is important to me, so it must be important to you, is that you can choose 1080 Fred or 240 Fred or anywhere in between, depending on the speed of your internet. Um, one of my first apps, my um, Apple ones, they were all quite high definition and people on a VSAT connection going across the Atlantic were really struggling to stream. So it is now you know, clever. You can leave it on auto, it will detect how fast your internet is and do the right thing. Then you can make it full screen, etc. So I'm gonna press play and let you watch the full video. Um, and then at the end, we'll go through some of the quiz questions together. MLC, Maritime Labor Convention. You are experts at this. You all have an SEA, Seafarers Employment Agreement. You all have to do cabin inspections. You do that under MLC and under British law, but definitely more now. You have food and water. It is good for ethnic. Um, you've got good quality food, good quality water. It is taken into religious accounts. Um, you probably get paid. You now might or might not be paying national insurance or tax, depending on which country you reside and where you're paid and your flag of your vessel. What else has changed? A little bit more certification, DMLC 1 and 2. We've talked about that before. We'll talk about it again. Um, you might be I don't know, medical care aboard ship for you and I on super yachts. We discussed in the ROW, it's a bit like no one rides on the outside of a train, but MLC is about making it fair and standards and harmonizing it across. I don't think your cabin has got bigger or smaller on your boat. But we were already on super yachts, probably above the minimum standards. Let's have a look at it together. Who wrote or where, where did MLC come from? It came from the International Labour Organization. So on their website, it is the only tripartite UN agency since 1919. And it brings together governments, employers and workers of 187 member states today. And they set labor standards, develop policies, and devise programs promoting decent work for all women and men. Um, a nice little YouTube video there. If you, I'm not going to put it onto this one. 
because I appreciate you've watched quite a lot of video by now. Um, but definitely worth having a quick look at. Don't spend more than five minutes. Just go through the website so you could explain a little bit about the International Labour Organization. The mission and impact. The International Labour Organization is devoted to promoting social justice and internationally recognized human and labor rights, pursuing its founding mission that social justice is essential to universal and lasting peace. Once again, there is a nice YouTube video there you could watch. But the four strategic objectives at the heart of the Decent Work Agenda are to set and promote standards and fundamental principles and rights at work. So you as a seafarer on a ship, you are working create greater opportunities for women and men to decent employees to decent employment and income so promoting it across the workplace fantastic and enhance the coverage and effectiveness of social protection for all making sure we do have a social umbrella making sure we have medical care aboard ship so the uk ratified the mlc convention in 2013 i.e they signed on the on the line and it came into law in 2014. The MLC guidance, I've got it on the screen here. The International Labour Organization provides wide ranging rights and protection at work for the world's seafarers. I would suggest this next bit becomes a flashcard. The MLC sets minimum global standards for seafarers living and working conditions combines and updates more than 68 maritime related international labor standards over the last 80 years and makes it easier for governments and ship owners to apply systems and provide decent working conditions. It is organized into three main parts, the articles which set out the broad principles and responsibilities, the regulations and the codes which fall into five titles. MLC covers minimum requirements of seafarers to work on a ship, conditions of employment, seafarers accommodation, leisure facilities and onboard catering, health and safety, medical standards and access to onshore welfare uh, facilities, and five is complaints, inspections, responsibilities of the flag and port states. The MLC doesn't comply to ships only navigating in inland waters because their own national conventions would apply. Ships navigating in waters in or near to sheltered waters, ships involving fishing of traditional build, warships or naval ships, or ships not normally used in commercial activities. So private vessels are not MLC compliant. They can get a certificate because it makes their life easier. Um, MLC statutory instruments, I'm not going to go through each of these because it's going to take a long time. That these are the laws that came in in British legislation to make them into British law. Then we have the actual requirements. So a lot of this we've already done together in previous content. This is bringing it together, hopefully. So minimum requirements to work on a ship. We have a minimum age. So for British flagships, that is 16 years of age. That is MSN 1838. These numbers may change over time. I doubt it, but 16 years old. You and I on a super yacht is going to be 18, but you can have a trainee at 16. Medical certificates, so uh, ENG ones, they were MLC compliant um, right from the beginning. Um, so I think they changed in 2013. They changed color. So I think they also changed the ID that the your ship your, your personal ID on the number um, doesn't need to be displayed any longer. But effectively, everybody must have a MLC compliant ENG one or equivalent medical certificate. Training and qualifications, everyone must meet the minimum standards. So STCW for you and I, that was the Manila Amendments bringing everything together. So all these MSNs are to do with training and certification. You, your syllabus is MSN 1858, isn't it? These would be all the training and certifications for radio operators, engine and ratings. We, as I said, are yacht, that's fine. 
recruitment and placement. So MGN 476, 475 is MLC uh, recruitment and placement. You must come from a verified recruitment agency, making sure that they're doing their job correctly to supply the right people and that they are verified. Conditions of employment, SEAs, we have discussed. Everybody must have an SEA, Seafarers Employment Agreement. Yeah, everyone's happy with that. This is MGN 477, and this is all about CFAR Employment Agreement, SEAs. There have been quite a few questions on SEAs, so let's just make sure that you are 100% happy on this. Every seafarer employed in a vessel, including the captain, to which MLC regulations um, are legibly enforceable, must have an SEA. Uh, the SEA must include the minimum information set out in Annex 1. We will look at that together. And the notice of period of termination must be at least seven days as a minimum. The minimum notice period to be given by the parties to terminate the seafarer's employment must be stated in the SEA, must be the same for each party, and must not be less than seven days. Are we happy with that? That comes up. I don't know why that comes up. This is Annex 1. The information to be included on every SEA. Full name birthplace and date of birth, so identification of the crew member, name and address of the ship owner, the place where the agreement is entered into, the date on which the agreement is entered into, the capacity in which the seafarer is to work. If the agreement has been made for a defined period, the agreement has been made for a particular voyage, so basically how long the agreement is. Some can be voyage, some can be six months, some can be two months. So a definition of how long the agreement is made for. The health and social protection benefits provided by the ship owner. The maximum period of service on board following the seafarer is entitled to repatriation. Can't be more than 12 months, apart from a little bit in COVID times where it seemed to be extended. Um, seafarer's entitlement to repatriation, so where they're going to be repatriated back to, how they're going to be repatriated, and sometimes it'll be place of um, embarkation or home place. So you have to make sure, especially if you've got Australians or South Africans or someone who's from a, the other side of the world. The maximum sum in which the ship owner will pay in respect to compensation for any loss of personal property Part two, provision to be included where a seafarer is an employee. The wages, how much money am I gonna get paid per month? The manner in which this money is gonna be paid. The hours of work, the normal hours of work. Paid leave, how many paid leave days do I get per month? Uh, any pension benefits are we gonna be provided to the seafarer, including any entitlement to participate in a pension screen. Uh, and the grievance and disciplinary procedures. That would be the important bit. That's the bit that you and I probably look at. So on all SEAs, we've got these first 13 parts and then another six parts. Identification, how long are the, the, the um, contracts valid for, how much we're getting paid, what we are paid to do, hours of work, holiday time, repatriation. I want you to make a good list of what must be on an SEA. Make sure it's the things that you would remember for yourself. Don't make this more complicated than it has to be. Uh, model format, so have a good look at this model format or your own. And make sure that you could explain what an SEA is. I would think that would be simple for you to do. Let's go back and look at the MCA website. Everyone's happy with an SEA. We've then got the outer cover for list of uh, crew and list of young persons we've discussed. Crew and signatories of seafarers, so that's signing onto the articles, lists of young persons. Regulation two, wages, the purpose to ensure seafarers are paid for their services, that would be helpful. Uh, regulation 2.3, hours of work, rest and play. So you're all filling out those as per STCW and MLC. So under both, you must be doing it. Entitlement to leave, so normally it's what, 2.8 days per month that we get in the olden days. Um, title three, repatriation, so purpose to ensure the seafarer is able to return home. 
as we said, it will either be repatriation to point of embarkation or to their home. It will be defined in the SEA. How many flights a year? Um, the mode of transport they're going to have. Compensation for the ship, compensation for the ship's loss or foundering. The purpose is to ensure the seafarers are compensated when a ship is lost or is founded. You are still going to get paid, actually, and hopefully all your material worth will be reimbursed if you had your laptop or your phone was lost on board when the ship sank. It's probably not going to be the highest priority, to be honest. But MGN 480, manning levels. Um, to ensure the seafarers' work on board ship is sufficient personnel for the safe and efficient and secure operation of the ship. So we've talked about safe manning, hours of work, rest and play, MSN 1877. Uh, safe manning documents we've discussed. I don't know much about this one. Regulation um, 2.8, career and skill development opportunities for seafarers' employment. That's always been very quiet in all my books. The purpose is to promote career and skill development and employment opportunities for seafarers. I guess that's training, isn't it? So training younger crew, um, training older crew, I guess, to become captains, um, interior staff to become chief stewardesses, I don't know, uh, sommeliers, wine courses, medical training, you name it. We can definitely have career and skill development enhanced on some of the super yachts I've worked on. Title three, accommodation, recreational facilities, food and catering. Purpose, to ensure that seafarers have decent accommodation and recreational facilities on board. We looked at that together when we discussed your inspections of crew food, crew accommodation. Regulation 3.2, food and catering. Purpose, to ensure that the seafarers have access to good quality food and drinking water. All of these MSNs may change at some point, but there will always be this guidance on how to comply with MLC. As long as you've got an idea of what is coming under MLC, what we have discussed prior, there was a lot of things here that we did before MLC on a well-run British ship. Now they're making sure that it's happening worldwide. So MLC had very little um, difference on a British run ship but now it's hopefully produced a worldwide set of standards that all ships all flags all crew are having the same living and working experiences it would be annoying if you didn't get nice food um, or at least quality food that was nutritious and able to be eaten section four or title four health protection medical care welfare and social security protection so MGN 482 is all about medical care. We're going to protect the health of seafarers and ensure their prompt access to medical care on board ship and at shore. So medical assistance. So um, med you know, is one of them, but for this it will be TMAS centers, Medico, 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 and having access at sea and on shore to a doctor. Ship owner's liability. So we've looked at that for the ship owner's liability that we're going to have an insurance policy. That means if somebody is unwell, that there is financial backup to be able to provide for, what was it? How many weeks was it? Can't remember either. But we're going to be able to provide for, I think it was 18 weeks, and we're going to make sure they've got permanent damage. There is a compensation system in place to ensure that seafarers protect from the financial consequences of sickness, injury, or death occurring in connection with their employment. Title IV, access to shore-based welfare facilities. The purpose here is to ensure that seafarers working on board ship have access to shore-based facilities to secure their health and well-being. So you're looking for someone that you can go and talk to if you have mental issues or that will give help to your dependents, um, irrelevant of an ethnic minority or where they are from. We have MGN 486 that gives quite a lot. There's one for the Merchant Navy and one for the Port. So the Merchant Navy Welfare Board acts as a National Seafarers Welfare Board and is the umbrella charity for the maritime charity sector. There are several other seafarer organizations. So the International Committee on Seafarers Welfare, 
the Merchant Navy Welfare Board, the Dreadnought Unit at Guy's and St. Thomas, that's the biggest one, the most known. Mission Seafarers, um, they have free internet, they have computers. I used one of those in uh, Colombo in Sri Lanka. I went into one of their Seafarers missions. I was trying to speak to my wife-to-be at the time, and she was being annoying. Title IV, Regulation Social Security. To ensure that measures are taken with a view to providing seafarers with access to social security protection. Read HM and R revenue, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs tax information. That's making sure you're paying your national insurance. That has caused probably actually more than your SEA. It probably has affected some of you. So you now need to prove that you are paying your tax somewhere in the world. If you're British, that's fine. Most other countries, um, you're going to need to find a solution. Title V, Compliance and Enforcement. Purpose, to ensure that each member implements its responsibilities under this convention with respect to the ship that flies its flag. So that is all about survey, inspection and certification. You need to be experts on the survey, inspection and certification. We have done that. Let's just make sure you remember it. MSN 1848, MLC Convention Survey and Certification of UK Ships. This is where we're talking about the DMLC Part 1 and Part 2. That is the question that comes up a lot. So SEAs, repatriation, food, catering, accommodation inspections and certification. Make sure that you are happy. It is for ships over. 500 gross tons. We have mandatory surveys for all of those over 500 gross tons. Initial, renewal, and intermediate. The scope of the inspections is, well, funny enough, the annexes, the titles that we've just spoken about. So in all circumstances, the survey or inspection must cover the following working and living conditions under MLC. We've just talked about them. Make sure that those are the ones that you can mention from that list we just looked at. The declaration, DMLC declaration, is in two parts. Part one is to be completed by the attending surveyor who will identify the topics for a survey and set out by reference the relevant UK standards concerned under MLC. The form of DMLC Part 1 is at Annex 4 of this notice, and it is issued to particular ship will slightly vary depending on the type of ship. Part 2 is to be completed by the ship owner and approved by the attending surveyor when the first ship survey is completed. Part 2, the declaration, details the ship owner's speech for ongoing compliance with MLC. Documents to be carried on board and made available. The current valid MLC certificate and declarations of both parts must be carried on board and posted in a conspicuous place where it is available to all seafarers. The ship must also display um, that they have enforced the financial security complying. So if somebody gets sick, they get paid. Or if the ship founders, they get a new laptop. Uh, what else? Let's have a quick look. I think you ought to just, just refresh this DMLC. So there will be a Maritime Labour Certificate, an MLC certificate, yeah? Nothing new there, I wouldn't have thought. And it's just saying that they are, the ship has been surveyed and found to comply with MLC. Then we're going to have Part 1, which is Declaration of Maritime Labour Compliance Part 1, and that is done with the surveyor, as we just said, yeah? And it is setting out how and that the surveyor is happy that everything has been done in approval with that. Then we have part two. The following measures have been drawn up by the ship owner named in the certificate to which this declaration is attached to ensure ongoing compliance between inspections. Happy with your DMLC certificates. Make sure that you can talk about them thoroughly. Please look at them and make sure that you understand them. Okay, I'm not gonna read the entire certificate to you because we've spent enough time on MLC in these videos so far. 
you should know it and understand it from your time on board. That is MLC in a nutshell. I want you to make sure that you have looked at the notes and that you can explain MLC, International Labour Organization, what they're doing, how they're doing it, how it's affected you, so your SEA, uh, repatriation, wages, what's on an SEA, how it, how your day-to-day -day running at the ship, how you're enforcing it, so making sure that you've got crew that are old enough, they've got valid ENG1s, they have an SEA, they have been put on board from a recruitment agency that you are looking after their welfare, that you're looking after their cabins, their food, their um, time off, their repatriation, yeah, and that your ship is MLC compliant and that you are making sure that you're remaining compliant. Hopefully you feel comfortable with that. Make some flashcards. I think the next one is Coswell, then ISM. These last couple of videos before we get on to the final rules, lights and voyage, should be a walk in the park now because we have effectively covered them numerous times in the previous videos. Hopefully this is all making sense. You should be getting close to a, an exam soon. Make sure you are good at rules, lights and voyage, as well as this stuff, okay? Go learn your flashcards, let's go. Exactly right. Let's go. Um, play quiz. Let's see what the quiz comes up with. Which MSN gives guidance on how to create onboard complaints procedure? Now, I don't know. I'm not very good at numbers. Um, I would be if I had an exam tomorrow. Let's just say it's MSN 1849. Oh, what a lucky guess. Um, you have sadly had the death of a chef whilst in Italy. Who must meet the cost of burial expenses and return of property? Now, that may seem a bit strange and out there. That's a real exam question that came up last week. It's nice, I can update this now. So every time a new question comes through or one is not there, I can now add it. So I know that the correct answer is the ship owner. Yeah, but let's just say it's the crew. <gasps> Incorrect. Now it will come up with my feedback and in the event of death occurring on board or, or ashore or during a voyage, the ship owner will meet the cost of burial expenses or cremation, which is very nice. Um, you can also get money actually, you can get paid. If in your SEA you have an insurance payout, so if you're a family man, that's very important, isn't it? You can actually make sure that's in your SEA. That's also an exam question. What else do we have? So there's 13 of these. I'm not going to go through all 13, but I think it's nice to see how the quiz works. Who created MLC? Was it God? No. It was the International Labour Organization. Correct. Um, you get the idea. You have a crew member fall and break his leg. He requires treatment. How many weeks minimum would he get paid? Now the correct answer is, you don't know, do you? I think you just watch the video. Um, it's 16 weeks, so I'm gonna put the wrong one in. Uh, incorrect, <laughs> terrible. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fast forward each of these, because I'm not going to do them all. Oh, look, drag the list into the correct order. Oof. Arrange the MLC titles into order. So my flashcard says, minimum requirements to work for seafarers on a ship. So that's the age, isn't it? Oh, then it must be, I reckon, Conditions of employment, seafarers accommodation, complaints, health and safety, I think. Oh, health and safety, I think is gonna be there. There are five titles. You need to know those five titles. Is it the right answer? Yes, I got one right. Um, it's nice as well. You can actually go back. So if at the end you realize you made a couple of mistakes, you can go into review mode and you can see all the answers that you got wrong which is very helpful, isn't it? Especially when you get to the end, you can choose to just review and make sure that you're not gonna get them all wrong on the next go around. So, we're on the final question. 
you have an engineer whose ENG one has just expired. Can you go to C? Um, the correct answer is yes, up to three months. But we're just going to say no. Oh, ENG one can be extended. So that's exciting. It says so in MSN 1887. Next question is the last one. So are we going to get a happy Fred, a sad Fred? It's a sad Fred. We need to improve our answers here. I'm hoping that that has given you an idea of how I can help you pass this exam. As I said, 66 sections. I have covered the master's syllabus fully. I have also incorporated all the key core OOW videos. So you're getting great value here. Um, you need to be amazing at voyage, coal rig, situations. This will make you pass your exam.